Day. This is another Corporate Gamer Podcast. I'm your host, Corporate Gamer. This is episode 18th, recorded on July 8th, 2017. Old games becoming new again. Hope that everybody had a great uh, short week. Um, in Canada, we some people had a four-day four week due to Canada Day. Uh, had the Monday off. Uh, a lot of uh, Americans had Tuesday off. Um, I'm pretty sure all Americans had Tuesday off uh, for the 4th of July. So happy belated 4th. And uh, let's get into it. So um, this week, uh, I actually played a couple of retro games. I actually streamed them on Twitch. Um, one of them was uh, NH- uh, NHL 94, uh, which is a very old game that was released uh, for the Super NES, uh, Genesis, um, PC, you name it. Um, it's just a fun game. Some people say it's one of the best games that ever uh, console games or best console hockey games to ever come out with. Um, I have to admit it is pretty fun uh, playing playoffs. Um, so I had fun playing that. Um, and I also ended up playing um, FIFA International Soccer, um, which uh, was re- was a game that was released uh, also on Genesis and Super NES. I played both of those games on the Super NES, and um, I had a blast. It's amazing playing those old games. Uh, there's no extra features. There's no online mode. It's just play, have fun, and that's it. I like it because you can play for you know a short period of time, get your fix, and then you're done. You don't have to play for another month. So that's what I played in the last week. Uh, Let me know if you guys uh, like those uh, those games and uh, if you've played them recently or if you've actually ever played them. Um, Let me know your thoughts. Um, I personally always like them. They're they're a staple in my library and I think they're going to be a staple there for a very, very, very long time. All right. On to the news of the week. First story. Um, as everybody, or I've mentioned it before, um, StarCraft Remastered is being released. It's a remastered version, obviously, of the original StarCraft game that was released in late 90s. Um, it was actually released on March 31st, 1998. Um, I think the thought process started uh, around 93, 94. So it's been um, a game that's been, uh, <laughs> it's been out for a very long time, almost 20 years, actually. And uh, they're making a remastered of it, or Blizzard is making a remastered of it. And um, I found a, uh, a great little article on Ars Technica uh, going through um, some of the challenges of working on this, on this remastered project. I'm not going to go through the whole thing, only because it's, there's, there's a lot of information there. But um, I'm going to also link it in the, the show notes, so don't worry. Um, so... Uh, basically, um, the challenges they had is um, a lot of it was graphically, um, you know, the the size, you know, the, the rendering it at sixty nine instead of four three, um, and also the graphics per se. Uh, they have this, um, you know, it's one of those they don't want to update it too much, um, and you know they want to make sure that they're still honoring the original game as as, as closely as they can while making key updates to make it look slightly better or a little bit better. Um, And basically, it's funny because they they actually mention um, one of the buzz phrases made Blizzard classic games producer Pete Stillwell laugh. Don't be disruptive. That's how I was told to say, don't fuck it up, he said. (laughs) So they definitely have the player's interest at heart. They want to make sure that the game is getting released properly. um, And that's pretty cool. The uh, the game itself will be retailed at fifteen ninety nine or twelve ninety nine. I think it's euros. Um, and uh, a lot of the stuff like the the, the graphics, the sprites. Um, you know, keep in mind this was concept was created you know, in the early nineties or mid nineties. I was released in the late late nineties, and technology wasn't as uh, advanced in terms of 3D, you know, sprites and um, also the sound, you know, uh, we had to keep in mind that this was a PC game, but even back then, the PC games were in as evolved, so they had to make sure they remastered the sound to uh, remaster to a higher fidelity of 44,100 hertz, which is basically uh, CD quality. Um, I don't think it's HD quality. HD quality is uh, 90-something thousand um 
So yeah, they're going to be doing that. They're going to be redoing the 3D modeling to make sure that the shadows are, are you know, are adequate. Um, so that's uh, that's pretty cool. And I, I just found it really, really, you know, awesome that, you know, the challenges they had in, in, in updating this game um, that a lot of fans have loved. Um, I, I wouldn't know if it's loved more than StarCraft 2. I would think yes. Um, I personally had more fun with the original than StarCraft 2. But then again, I haven't played StarCraft 2 in a very, very long time. Um, it's been at least f five, six years. So um, it's really cool. And um, one of the the challenges they had, like I mentioned before, was the fact that um, you know, 16 by 9 and 4 by 3, which is actually pretty cool if I'd be able to play the original StarCraft in 16 9. And what they're actually going to have in game, which is uh, really awesome, is a toggle switch that will be able to have a uh, make game look old function, which basically it's um, like a button like F5, and you'll play it and it'll toggle between the original graphics and the new updated graphics, uh, which is awesome. And uh, you'll also be able to have uh, another on-the-fly visual toggle, um, uh, they say F7, well, I don't know, a combination of real-time lighting and environmental effects. So it'll actually be able to, you know, um, disable the new graphical effects and so on. So uh, that's uh, that's the article I read this week. It's actually pretty interesting. I invite you guys to actually go and, and check it out on Ars Technica. You'll have the, uh, the link down in the show notes. Are you guys excited to actually play StarCraft? I know for me, um, it's an old classic game that I've actually wanted to play again for a very long time. I just never got into it. And now that there's a remastered, I'm actually thinking of picking it up. I think it'd be really cool to get back into it. But then again, I'm a guy that likes to play old games, as you've noticed. So I'm pretty sure that I'll, I'll probably pick it up at some point. But um, I'm, like, I'm, I'm liking the fact that they're putting quite a, f a bit of effort in there, trying to make sure that they don't lose too much of the old stuff and, uh, and the feel. And um, they're just modernizing it, which is actually pretty cool. The next game on the list, or the next story on the list not game, story, is actually a pretty nice one. It's uh, pretty cool. I actually heard this uh, for the first time on Podcast Unlocked, um, but I also read it on Ars Technica as, Ars Technica as well. So um, there's an, a Halo-inspired game called Installation 1, uh, named after the Halo ring. Um, it's basically a Halo derivative game. Uh, that's not made by Microsoft. It's made by a third party. And um, they came, the third party, uh, the Installation One team, I, I actually don't know who the company is. Um, they got the okay uh, from Microsoft uh, to pursue create no the game and they're not going to pull the plug on the game because microsoft is legally allowed to do that and a lot of other companies have done that notably uh, nintendo is n notorious for going after even homebrews of of games or developers um so that you know they pull them off of, of the market so in this case installation one uh they've been in contact with three two three uh, three four three industries and microsoft 343 is the developer that's creating the last series of um, of Halo games. So they started with 4, 5, and 6 is going to be the next one. Um, and Microsoft, which holds the Halo license. Um, and they've assured, um, they've, they've assured them that they will not pursue them uh, legally, which is actually pretty awesome. And, um, and basically... They have to abide by the rules, the creation rules of Microsoft. So what it seems to be, it's one of those things where it was probably more the money thing. Um, and they cannot make any money in terms of uh, merchandising or anything. And they can't do any reverse engineering, which is fine. It's common, you know, jargon for, for these games um, as well. You know, for big companies and big gaming games, it's actually pretty um, pretty standard. Uh, but it's actually nice to know that officially, you know, um, a company, a big company like Microsoft, wasn't a hawk in this case, and they've actually embraced the fact that there's fans that made a, a game 
uh, you know, based on the Halo universe, which is actually really, really cool. Um, so I, I commend uh, Microsoft for this, and I, I, I hope that this is a, a tendency or a trend that continues in the next few years. Um, some of the best games out there are homebrews or uh, versions of games that are out there. Um, I know there's been Mario Brothers, there's Wario Brothers, um, you know, that's just one from the top of my head. There's a gazillion of them. I've, I've actually seen uh, quite a few uh, from uh, Mike Matai. He plays them on um, Cinemasker Plays. Um, so this is pretty cool. I, uh, I, I'm really uh, happy for this. And um, I hope this is a tendency that continues. Again, I'll, I'll link you guys in the show notes. All right, next story on the list. Uh, PSN done goofed. Um, so due to an issue with PayPal, um, thousands of PSN accounts were actually locked or banned, um, which is insane. So, uh, basically, PlayStation's UK support team has been <laughs> flooded by on their Twitter account with complaints over PayPal. Um, uh, so, basically, I got this from uh, 247, vg247.com. So, this is an article that was uh, based on Kotaku. Uh, speaking to Kotaku, an internal source at PayPal divulged that thousands of accounts have been affected in the UK. The error has caused PSN user accounts to go into debt and subsequently be banned. So essentially, I think the way that it works is um, if you have you have a transaction that fails for whatever reason, or it's to validate your account, I think that's what it is. Uh, so PayPal statement, blah, 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 the error is in Sony and it's just some closing some are limiting the GPP account, meaning the funds didn't credit the accounts yet. So it seems that since the transaction didn't go through, um, it actually, um, it actually banned the, the user. Um, I haven't seen any, any new stories or edit regarding this. So I don't know if these accounts were actually unbanned because obviously this is a fuck up from, from PlayStation. Uh, but apparently uh, the last I heard is that Sony is speaking to PayPal, um, in regarding to getting this, this rectified as soon as possible. Um, yeah, that's, that's really sad. <laughs> um, I, I just don't know. I, I, I guess it can happen to anyone, I guess. It's just, it's the model that they use in order to get that. Um, I hope for, I hope PlayStation, um, and this seems to be UK hit, hitting UK more than anybody else. So I'm hoping that these players get their uh, their accounts unbanned uh, for the foreseeable, foreseeable future. So uh, let me know if you guys, uh, if somebody, one of you was was affected by this. How do you how do you feel? Um, and what uh, steps have you gotten in order to get this rectified? So yeah, PSN uh, PSN accounts being banned due to PayPal issue. Whoops. Uh, the next. And you guys didn't hear that. There's a noise that came on. <laughs> There's an ad that just played in my ear. <laughs> uh, next story on the list. All right. So the actually something that's really cool. It's been available for a very long time on Steam is the fact that you're able to give uh, send games as a gift to somebody else. So let's say I know your user, user A, user B. Um, I, user A, want to send, uh, you know, I pay for a game and I send it as a gift to user B. I can do that. There's the capability. It's been, um, you've, it's been years, I think. It's been quite a few years since you've been able to do that, at least on Steam. Um, but on the console, I've never actually seen this happen. Uh, but apparently that's coming to an end. Um, Xbox One game gifting feature should be coming soon. Um, Mike Ibera. Uh, head of Xbox has advised that um, advised that uh, that's something that could potentially be happening. It's not something that's on PS4 or Nintendo Switch yet, but I can see the appeal, and, and it's I think it's due. Um, ever since Xbox Live, I don't know why this never actually happened. I think that um, I think that 
obviously if Xbox One starts going into it, I'm assuming PS4 is going to follow suit. And I'm really hoping Nintendo Switch does this because I actually feel it's something users on the Nintendo Switch, I don't know why, I actually find that it's something on Nintendo Switch would be, somebody on Nintendo Switch would be more inclined to buy gifts for somebody else. Um, I don't know why, I just thought, I just think that it's something that they would do more than Xbox One and PS4. Um, for me personally, I've never really given that many gifts over this in this fashion, but apparently, um, from what I've read on the online, it's a very popular feature on Steam, and it's something that apparently people have been asking for quite a quite a quite a few uh, years now. So yeah, it's something that seems to be coming. There's no definite date. It just seems to be rumors at this point, fodder. Um, so we'll see. Um, how that uh, that's gonna go um, yeah so uh, gifting on Xbox one gaming on Xbox Live essentially all right next story that grabbed my attention this week Reggie explains why Nintendo is avoiding 4k um, so this is an article from uh, nintendoprime.net where uh, there was an interview with uh, Reggie Philzaim um about um actually it was an interview with the verge i apologize about why nintendo then go the 4k route um and uh his reasoning is the following and i quote the nintendo mission is to reach as many consumers as possible and to have them engage and have fun with our intellectual property games essentially his his games the the pro the proprietary games on nintendo that's what we try to do. So inher inherently, we go for a more mainstream audience. Inherently, we want our products to be affordable. We want our products to be easy to pick up and experience, low learning curve, and we want our IP to shine uh, as we deliver those experiences. Which I could understand his point. Um, I could understand in a way why 4K wasn't... Um, you know, so basically what he's saying is 4K is not popular right now because it's so new and it wasn't worth to increase the price of a $300 console for uh, for the Switch in order to have that in. Um, he's saying that a $300 is a sweet spot. I think that's false. I think the sweet spot for a gaming console is $250, uh, $249 actually. Um, but that's my, my interpretation. The, they know better than me, and they've been selling well, so I can't really argue with that. The thing I don't agree with the first quote that I gave you is that, um, so you want to play with their intellectual property. Okay, great. So that's fine. We want our products to be affordable, which is great. I understand. We want our products to be easy to pick up and experience. Okay, I get that, but you don't need to have... You know, once you plug in your console, there's nothing to do. So I don't know why, yeah, you pick it up and con experience a console. That's what a console is. You pick up and play. There's no, you know, yes, I understand the Xbox One X. You know, people are saying, oh, we have to buy a 4K. You don't actually have to. It will upscale upscale your, your graphics to a better quality, but you don't need a 4K. But yes, I get that, you, you know, to get a full 4K experience, you have to buy a new TV which I am not doing. Um, so for me, there's no personal reason why I would buy something else. Low learning curve. I don't know what 4K has to do with learning curves, but apparently and it's a low, they want a low learning curve with their games. Okay. Uh, that does not address the 4K question in my eyes. And we want our IPs to shine as we deliver these experiences. So basically, in short... Although I don't agree with necessarily everything he said, I think what they're saying is, you know what, 1080p is what it's where majority of players are right now. We don't need to put any more money in it, and uh, all we want is the most people to be able to enjoy our games. That's basically it. Um, I just don't agree necessarily with his quote, but I see where they're coming from, and also Nintendo has never been the graphics uh, juggernaut 
ever. I mean, even in the 16-bit era, um, they weren't ahead of the game in terms of graphics. I think Genesis was slightly ahead uh, in terms of technology, for some, at least for some games. Um, so, you know, and even in the last few years with the Wii, Wii U, you know, and even now the Switch, they're not ahead of the game in terms of their focus is a lot on gameplay and not necessarily on how they show those games or demonstrate those games. So, um, yeah, um, Nintendo explaining how, why they're avoiding 4K. Um, obviously their next console is going to have to be in 4K, but imagine, um, I, and I had mentioned this on my, on my corporate gamer page, um, Imagine a Nintendo console that's 4K that has backwards compatibility to old games. So they're essentially what they're doing right now with or what they want to do with the online stuff. And, uh, you know, and it's still 3350. Let's say put it at 350. Those would sell like hotcakes and they would put everybody... They're already making loot's progress and they're selling a lot and you know there's rumors on some people are saying that you know it may outsell the uh, xbox uh this year um which may very well be xbox is not really you know it's not sold everywhere uh, and the one of the main markets where the switch and playstation reside is china and asian markets which they don't really you know xbox doesn't really have a presence there um but it seems to be selling really, really well in North America. Um, so, you know, I can't really say anything about that. However, I think many people still, like, forget the, the fanboys of Nintendo. Somebody that's in on the fence. Somebody that's, you know, that's not a Nintendo fan or a console fan or they don't have brand. Uh, they're not leaning towards one or the other. You look at Nintendo and... The Nintendo, in everybody's mind, it's a family console. And you're, you know... And in the last few years, you kind of assume that you're not getting the most powerful. And you don't need to, in terms of games. If And I've always said this, you can have the, the most powerful, you know, machine in the world. But if the games are not there, you're not, you know, nothing's going to happen. You're not going to sell. Um, Nintendo is not... In terms of graphics, in terms of hardware, they're not the top tier, but their games are very fun. Um, you know, Breath of the Wild. Most people that I've heard I've heard about um, loved it. Um, there's a few people that I've heard on podcasts that said that they they weren't a fan of it. So it seems to be something that either you like it or you know you don't. There's no middle ground. Um, Wombat. I think it's Wombat from. Uh, Cadcast that uh, wasn't a big fan of it. Um, he found it boring and, and long. I can't say one way or the other because I don't have it. But the majority of the of people have have liked it. Critics of it's a critics darling. Um, the only game that really that I to me that would sell the console. There's two things that would sell me the console for the Switch, and I'm thinking of maybe getting it at one point. It would be to have the Switch for the backwards compatibility compatibility game so you know i gave up on the fact that there's an snes classic mini being released um i'm gonna probably for that price i'm gonna pay the 20 dollars a month uh 20 dollars a year and play the classic games on the switch so that would that would be one thing that would sell me the other thing that would sell me is uh mario odyssey um, as much as a, I, for me, Zelda is not the one that sells me anything. Um, it's a great, it, they have, no, I've always loved their games, but I'm not, it's not the one that sells me. Mario is the one that sells me or talks to me uh, in terms of games. So if I buy the Switch, it'll be because of Mario. It's not because it's the hard, biggest, the best hardware out there. And it's not because of there's all, all the bells and whistles. It's literally just to play the games that are, you know, uh, on on the hardware, so imagine if you know they make it easier to program for it. You have third party support, so that means you would have all the big third party games like Call of Duty and and not the crappy ports, the regular ports. You have 4K, even if you don't have 4K, remove 4K, 
and you have backwards compatibility plus the the notoriety of the games of Nintendo, that's it. They kill the industry right there. Um, Xbox and PlayStation will very will compete very little with that if that's what they would release with, which is not the case. They're going on gameplay and the online service is not on yet. It's not there yet. They're they've just came. Well, no, Wii U was HD. Wii wasn't, but um, yeah. Um, I think if they would go that direction, it'd be amazing, but I don't think it's something that Nintendo is actually going to be thinking of doing, but yeah, they would, they, if they would do that, those, those things, if they, if they would just release a gaming console like that, the gaming world would lose its mind for sure. Cause every gamer that's ever played games for the longest time will always refer to at least one or two games that were an NES exclusive. Let it be Super Mario Brothers, Zelda, Punch Out, um, Metroid. Um, I think that yeah, they have they would they would make so much money on that. It's amazing. Anyways, enough about me going on on that. Um, so basically, uh, 4K is not do, it's not working for it's not gonna happen for the Switch, and that was the reason for Reggie from Reggie or from Nintendo. Uh, basically, it's price, and they didn't wanna. There's not enough of a fan base for 4K right now. All right. Next on the list, the games of the week. So these are the games being released uh, between July 3rd and July 9th. Um, I'm a little bit late since I've been recording later and later during the week. This is Saturday. Um, I apologize for that, but um, I'm hoping that you're able to uh, see if you're able to, to, to buy these, uh, these games. So you have... Monday, July 3rd, we have Death Squared on the Switch. Tuesday, July 4th, it's That's You for the PS4. Wednesday, July 5th, we had Speedrunners on PS4. Thursday, July 6th, we had Kirby's Blowout Blast for the 3DS. A Neo Geo Metal Slug 2 for the Switch. Vaccine for the Switch. Sheaf, Sheafy, I guess. Shifi, I don't know what the, how to pronounce that, uh, for the Switch. Toby, The Secret Mind for the PS4. Revenant Saga for the Wii U. Again, I don't know why they're releasing stuff for the Wii U since they stopped production. And Friday, July 7th, Energy Cycle for the Vita. Nin uh, Ninja Yusajimaru, uh, Two Tales of Adventure for the Vita. And Save the Ninja Clan for the PS4. It's been a pretty, it's a pretty, um, there's not that many games. It's a pretty <laughs> weak lineup this week. Uh, there's not much to talk about. Um, but, um, you know, a lot of people are saying the Switch is not releasing a lot of games. Well, you know what? Of all, all those games, there's one, two, three, one, two, three, f well, okay, there's more than that. There's Nintendo is actually releasing one, two, three, four, five, six games this week. And four of them are on the Switch. Okay, obviously one is a retro uh, Neo Geo game, but Vaccine and Shifi, Shifi, whatever. I don't have no clue what that is. Um, and Death Squared for the Switch. So, um, yeah, a lot of people saying that there's no games for the Switch. Well, this is your week. And it may actually work in their favor. It's kind of the lull of the summer. There's not a lot of releases at this point. And, um, yeah, um, they may benefit from this, so... Those are the games of the week. All right. Now down to the last segment of the show, the talking point of the week. And, uh, you know, I've mentioned of a few old games throughout the show, you know, Starcraft and Halo and, and so on. So the topic this week that I wanted to, to talk about is are old games becoming new again? Are we facing the same... I guess the same, uh, you know, cycle as the movies and TVs and so on and so forth, where they're remastering old movies and and, and so on. In this case, it's old games. Um, you know, just to name a few, we remastered. In the, Starcraft is coming out, so Starcraft remastered. Uh, Crash Bandicoot came out with N Trilogy last week. 
Um, last year we had Halo, or two years ago we had Halo Master Series where they remastered uh, the first four Halos, I believe. Um, was it the first three or first four? I think it's first four. Um, and uh, and there's a whole slew of them, right? There's a bunch of games that are getting re-released, uh, getting an HD makeup. Um, I think it's just, I'll be quite honest, um, a lot of people from the outside are seeing retro gaming as being popular. If you go onto Twitch, you know, obviously if you listen or look at my channel um, and you, you look at my my posts on my, my page, on my Facebook page, um, you'll see that there's a lot of retro gaming references there. Um, I play, uh, and even this week, look, I I even mentioned that I played FIFA International Soccer and NHL 94 on SNES. Um, so there is a fan, there is a fan base for old games. The problem is a lot of times there's, you know, consoles that are being upgraded, systems, you know, um, in terms of StarCraft, for example, I played that game on my Pentium, was it a Pentium 2, Pentium 3? I don't even remember. I think it was a 586. Um, having said that, um, so, you know... A lot of people have played this game, and I think, uh, I don't know if there was a cry, you know, a big cry for a remaster of StarCraft, but they're doing it. And to Blizzard's credit, they actually seem to be wanting it to do it the right way. You know, unlike the, you know, Star Wars movies, for example, the original trilogy where they kept adding, you know, bits and pieces to... You know, new added footage and, and that looked awful um, compared to the other stuff that was there um, or that was there on the original cut. Um, I understand in a way when they want to re-release old games. So in terms of like Sega Forever, um, that was a missed opportunity by Sega. Um, I think the negative press is going to hinder them a lot. But... Um, I think the idea was noble, getting released in on mobile, which is, I, I, I agree with that. It's something that I think should happen. Are we going to start seeing more and more PC games being remastered and getting re-released? And uh, from, you know, I, I don't know if there's a, a pattern yet to say that there's enough to say, to, to, to go on. To say, yeah, it's it's something that's trending. It's going to it's going to happen. I think right now, um, StarCraft is the main one. Um, there's been a con console has been re-releasing games left, right, and center, from Neo Geo to old Sega games. Um, yeah, it's been insane. But I don't know if there's a need for old PC games. I do play old PC games from time to time. In fact, um, I think I mentioned it last week, I played SimCity 2000 um, on GOG.com. Um, I just wanted to play and it was fun. The thing about old games is um, you get into them to get a fix. It's a nostalgia thing, right? You play, oh, I remember this game. And you're like, you know what? Let me play very often, very few people actually finish the game because they get their fix and they're done. Or you play it, you finish the game, and then you're good. You got your fix for like four or five years. And then you'll eventually go back to it. But I don't know if there's a need for it. And I don't know if there's enough of a market to say, to re... Because this could open a door to a new gamer, right? A gamer that's never played this in their life. And they're like, hey, this is a this was a really popular game in the past. Let's let's play this. Um, rediscover having new fans rediscover old games, but I don't know if there's a need for it or there's a want for it. Um, like StarCraft, if you want to play StarCraft, chances are you're going to play StarCraft too. You're not going to play the original StarCraft, but there's going to be those players, those those cluster of base players that are probably going to want to play the new remastered one, and with reason. It looks like it's going to be a really good game. Um, I think I may pick it up at one point for 15 bucks. Why not? There's nothing to lose. Um, would I like to see old games being remastered? Yeah, sure. There's a ton of old games. 
Um, I think was it Steam that I saw there was a bundle for for Police Quest, and I think they had like remastered some of it, like Police Quest One or whatever, um, which is fine. But I, if I'm gonna play the old game, I still want to play the old the original game the way that it was released. So with little little tweaks here and there. If it's to optimize it and make sure that it runs properly on new hardware, fine. But don't you know the graphics and so on. You know the one of the reasons why I play the original X. The uh, sorry, the original Police Quest. It's because it's so cheesy. It's so pixelated. It's it's really you know it's not a super game. Same thing with Leisure Shoot, Leisure Shoot Larry. Um, it's it's really fun. Uh, the way it is, and I wouldn't play it any other way. And a lot of games throughout the years have, you know, some graphics were really horrible, especially in the late 90s when 3D was starting to be, you know, part of games, and, and um, you know, and, and you had the dooms of this world, the, the well, that wasn't actually real 3D, uh, neither was Duke Nukem, but uh, there were other games that were 3D rendered, and they looked horrible, right? Um, back then they looked okay, but they looked horrible, um, now in retrospect, and I don't know if I would want to have them remastered, um, I think as long as they play on new, on hardware, um, I'm fine with it, um, Steam has a tendency of bringing back old, old, old games, um, even GOG, um, and I'm for that, you know, Theme Hospital, great, if they come up with a new Theme Hospital game, That'd be awesome, you know, with real graphics and so on. But to remaster the original and redo it, I don't think there would be a... a I personally think there's no market for that. And I don't think a lot of people are going to go back and play those old games. And on top of that, there's so many games to play now. It's not even funny. You know, before you would have a game come out every, you know, two, three months. And that was like, whoo. Now there's games coming out every week um and there's just so many out there i'm not saying they're all quality but there's so many out there i don't think there's enough time to actually go back and play old games uh, no that's that, that's not that's not true people will go back and play old games but i just don't see the the, the value of putting all that effort to remaster when the player itself just wants to get a quick fix in general yeah, you may get some new fans, but I mean, how many new fans of StarCraft are you going to get with the remastered? That's something when it gets released, I'd like to see, and I'd like to, to, to report on to see if, no, there is actually new fans being going to play StarCraft. Um, there's leagues right now for StarCraft 2, uh, and this is at a time before, you know, online esports was very, very popular, so I don't know if... if um, um, the dynamic was different back then, and maybe it's going to spark a new, a new generation of players that are going to want to play StarCraft, uh, a new version of StarCraft. So, um, yeah, for me, I, I, I think that in general, when old games get re-released, it's a money grab, which is fine. Companies can do what they want. Um, I get bit ever so often. Um, Steam is probably the one that's the least corporate uh culprit i mean of that because they'll release the games for like you know five bucks <laughs> um how can you say that like two bucks for a game like how can you say no for that to that um so for me personally um i think that uh releasing old games is more of a bunny grab and i don't think there's a fan there's there's enough fans out there to merit a comeback of remaking old games or revamping old games at least not yet um i and i just hope that the gaming industry doesn't fall into the same hole as the um mu the tv industry and motion pictures um movies um, often um, it misses the mark if they redo something it's not quite the same. You kind of lose that feel of the original. Um, and I think that games will be similar in a similar boat if they continue going that way. I do agree 
that StarCraft seem, or Blizzard seems to be doing it well, doing it the proper way. But I haven't played it, and I don't know if that's true or not. So um, we'll see when that comes out. But uh, yeah, that was my talking point of the week. Old games new again. What do you guys think? Is there a, a market for old PC games coming back? Or old games being remade into new ones? Uh, being revamped? Um, let me know what you think. Uh, and I'll I'll uh, leave you my coordinates in the show notes as well. Um, last thing this week. My uh, review of the week. Uh, my review of the week this week was the original Mario Brother, Brothers. The one that started it all. For um, the one that started all for the um, for the Mario franchise, it's not the Super Mario franchise. It's Mario Brothers. Got released in the arcades, and then it got released on a slew of different systems, uh, including the NES. I played it on the NES, and uh, yeah, it's still fun to this day. I still like it. Short. Sure, um, I think a lot of people would probably find it too different. Um, but I personally like it. It's challenging. Um, yeah, the first few s stages are a joke, but once you get further into the game, you may think it's very easy, but it's something that's, uh, it's not too easy to do. It's not too easy to, to, to configure. So, uh, to play. So, um, yeah, my review is up on, uh, corporategamer.net. Uh, check out my website. Uh, that's where you find all of my reviews, all of my, uh, comments. You can also see uh, um, on my Twitter and my Facebook feed, I always put an, on this day uh, games that were being released. Uh, you can see all those on my webpage as well. You could also see old uh, my old streaming on Twitch, my own uh, my past broadcasts. So uh, yeah, take a visit, take a gander. Let me know what, how you guys, what you guys think. Leave me a comment. Uh, you can also reach me on Facebook at Corporate Gamer, uh, Twitter, Corporate Gamer 9, uh, my YouTube channel, just search for Corporate Gamer. Um, and you can also listen to me on my other po podcast, the aroundtable.ca podcast, where we talk about music, movies, um, anything that's entertainment. It's just different topics. You can listen to it on iTunes um, and Google Play and SoundCloud. And uh, that's it for me this week. Have a great week, guys. Talk to you next week. 